Hi gang, here's how I made an electrolyzer to generate hydrogen for flying a balloon. I'll also explain what an electrolyzer is and how it works. This was done for almost zero dollars, using scraps for most everything. The first attempt failed, but as you can see, the second one worked great. To give you some idea of what you'll be seeing, I'll start with what an electrolyzer is and how it works. Water is made from two types of atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. It's written as H2O, or two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. Electrolysis is a method for splitting that H2O apart. For splitting water, that's done by inserting two metal electrodes into the water, with a gap between them. Pure water isn't electrically conductive, so we add something to it to make it conductive. In our case we're adding sodium hydroxide, but many things will do. When electricity is applied to the electrodes, a chemical reaction occurs, which causes the hydrogen from the water to go to one plate and the oxygen to the other plate. There they form bubbles of gas, which then rise up. But if we do it like this, then we get a mix of hydrogen and oxygen gas coming out. We want just the hydrogen, so we put something between them and provide separate outlets above them. That way we direct the hydrogen into the balloon and the oxygen can just go into the surrounding air. Now on with how to make an electrolyzer, starting with the container, so that I'll know how big things need to be. I dug this one out of my collection and cut off the top. I decide to leave most of the top of the electrolyzer open, so that no pressure builds up where it isn't needed. Then I found some straight sided soda bottles for trapping and directing the gases. I cut the bottoms away. A quick test with the help of some pinching shows that they fit in the container. They're not touching the bottom since I want fluid to flow from one to the other. Ideally the electrode should be stainless steel so that you don't get corrosion. As you can see from the color of the fluid, mine weren't, or at least there was some sort of coating. Again, I was making this for zero dollars, so I started with an old garbage can. From looking at similar ones online, it looked like it might be stainless steel. I first take it apart, and then mark out an electrode plate. Cutting it is fairly easy using a pair of tin snips or side cutters, and so I cut a whole bunch of them. Next I drill four holes in them, two at the top and two at the bottom. Here are the finished plates. I need something to separate the plates so that bubbles can form on the surfaces between them. For the top I use normal steel washers, but whatever I use for separating them lower down in the fluid has to be corrosion resistant. So I again mark up some stainless steel from the garbage can and cut and bend and flatten them to make spacers. I make sure they're the same thickness as the washers. I then drill a hole in each of them. And here are the finished spacers. Next comes assembling the full electrodes. The top won't be in the fluid, so I use normal steel bolts. For the bottoms I use nylon bolts from Home Depot, since they won't corrode. Then comes normal steel washers for the top, and the stainless steel spacers for the bottom. That's followed by another plate, and so on for a total of five plates. Nylon and steel nuts hold it all together. And here's one set of electrodes after tightening it all up with a screwdriver and wrench. Next comes assembling all those parts. I start by marking where to make the holes in the soda bottles. Rather than risk the plastic splitting on me, I use a soldering iron to melt the holes. With some added nuts on the bolts, I insert one of the steel plates. I then add more nuts, but I worry about gases leaking out. So I apply some hot glue, and then tighten the nuts in place. I then insert them in the container. So far so good. Next comes all the tubes for moving the hydrogen and oxygen around. For that I have some flexible quarter inch vinyl tubing from a hardware store, and some polystyrene tubes from a hobby store. The vinyl tubes fit snugly inside the polystyrene ones. These two bottles go by a variety of names. I know them as bubblers or flame arresters. Flame arrester is probably the better name, because that's what they're for. Hydrogen is highly flammable and burns in air. If it ignites in the balloon, for example, the flame will follow the hydrogen up the tube and into the bottle. It'll get to the water, and the water will stop it from going further into the electrolyzer. The flame is arrested. I measure out the length of the tube which connects to the electrolyzer for putting the gas in the bottom of the flame arrester, and cut two of them. Then I cut shorter ones for the gas outlets. I end up with these. Next I use a knife to make holes in the lids. I could use a drill, or the soldering iron again, but this is a chance to show you a quick and dirty method for making holes, which I sometimes use. And here are all the holes. I insert the tubes into flame arresters and the soda bottle caps, and use hot glue to fix them in place, and to seal the holes. Time to screw the lids in place. I quickly realize that I don't like the way the electrodes are leaning. I'd rather they were straight vertical for the bubbles to rise up, so I cut some more short polystyrene tubing, and put them snugly on the ends of the nylon bolts. Now the electrodes stand straighter. 
Finally, I put the tubes from the electrolyzer in place. The electrolyzer is done. Before taking it all outdoors to test, I prepare a balloon first. There isn't a lot of pressure here, probably not enough to inflate and stretch a normal party balloon. So I use a lightweight, flimsy bag, normally used for putting fruits and vegetables in at the grocery stores. I also need an elastic, some more vinyl tube, and some string. I first tie the string to the end of the bag. That's so that I can keep the balloon from flying away later. Then I put the end of the vinyl tube inside, remove any air, and twist the elastic on around the bag and tube. I keep twisting the elastic on until it looks like it might break. Then I stop. I test it by blowing it up, then pulling the nylon tube out. Even though I press on the balloon, it doesn't deflate. I put it on a flame arrester. It's time to use the electrolyzer to put some hydrogen in the balloon. I'm being helped by a group of makers here in Ottawa called Hack613.com. We start with it set up on a concrete slab. We have a 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery, a voltmeter measuring across the electrolyzer. The positive of the battery goes to these electrodes, where oxygen gas is generated. We're just venting the oxygen out this vinyl tube. The negative of the battery goes to these electrodes, where hydrogen gas is generated. It'll go out to this flame arrester, where it'll bubble up through the water and go into the balloon. I put in distilled water, not tap water since it contains impurities which might contaminate things. Then I carefully add sodium hydroxide. Notice the gloves and safety goggles. If you don't know how to handle sodium hydroxide safely, then use baking soda instead. It'll just work more slowly. Unexpectedly, the fluid is turning pink on the oxygen side, but not much else is happening. The voltage seems quite low. The battery was charged up, but we suspect it's no good. We did disconnect the battery from the electrolyzer, and the voltage was 8 volts, and it was 12 volts to start with. So we switched to using a car battery instead, with the car running. The voltage is a healthy 13 volts. Sadly, I suspect the current is probably more than my meter can handle, so we don't measure the current. We lowered the water level in the flame arrester to reduce the amount of water the gas would have to push down through in the tube, and we get hydrogen bubbles coming out. We hadn't lowered the water in the oxygen side yet though. We did later, and got bubbles there too. And there was a lot more activity in the electrolyzer itself. After running it for two minutes, the balloon had this much hydrogen. After only nine minutes, the balloon is lifting into the air. Note the color of the fluid. Likely the metal wasn't stainless steel after all. That's too bad, because otherwise we could have reused the fluid. The water gets used up, but not the sodium hydroxide. Finally, after 20 minutes, we decide the balloon is full enough. We disconnect from the battery, and I remove the balloon. Success! It flies! A big thanks to the gang from Hack613.com for their help on testing day. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more how to videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.